This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to answer the question, do Bitcoin miners control Bitcoin? But first, a bit of context. Using the word miners here is problematic since Bitcoin is no longer dominated by solo miners and has not been for many, many years. Almost all Bitcoin blocks have been mined by large mining pools for over a decade. We can see a recent example here from this year where the Foundry mining pool, the largest US mining pool, mined eight blocks in a row. This is not what you want to see. This begins to look like JP Morgan processing your transactions. And this is another way of viewing Bitcoin mining pool centralization. This pie chart, we can see Foundry here at about 26, 27% of the hash rate. And then we have a bunch of large Chinese mining pools like Ant Pool, uh, uh, Spider Pool, F2 Pool, I believe is Chinese backed as well. So this is the problem of Bitcoin mining pool centralization that companies like Ocean Mining are trying to fix. It's important to distinguish between miners and mining pools. And that's how I want to start this video. Miners or what we call hashers or the actual mining rigs or the ASICs that do the actual computational work, which ends up being just lots of SHA-256 hashes, which is why we call miners hashers. It might be a better name for them. So you have miners or hashers, and then you have the mining pools, which are basically services that build potential blocks. In other words, give the miners a block template, give it to the hashers and miners to hash, and then split the rewards across the individual miners or hashers based on how much work, how much proof of work they have put in. So this is a real service because mining a block on your own might take 100 years, and you have to pay for all that electricity along the way. So we have miners and hashers, and then we have mining pools. Now, ocean mining is a special type of mining pool since it allows and in fact requires hashers to build their own potential blocks, their own block templates, and thus it returns power to the individual hashers and miners themselves. By contrast, all other mining pools force miners and hashers to use the block template that they provide. The real power in Bitcoin mining resides with the person at the mining pool who gets to decide which Bitcoin transactions go into a potential block because they have the power of censorship and they have the power of including transactions as well and decide which transactions go into a block. And today, most of that power, unfortunately, is concentrated in the hands of probably 10 or so people when it comes down to it out of 8 billion people on planet Earth. So that's what we mean by mining pool centralization. And the way that you fix it is by getting hashers and miners to build their own block templates, not by forcing nodes to relay spam to everyone on an equal opportunity basis, as Bitcoin Core has proposed to help to solve mining pool centralization, which is an absurd, absurd proposal. Now, Bitcoiners should not be outsourcing block template construction if they are mining, and you no longer need to. If you want to do pooled mining, you can mine with Ocean and get a split of the rewards. If you want to do solo mining, you can set up your own Bitcoin Knots node and then use Datum Gateway, which is produced by, by Ocean, but it's free and open source software. You can use Datum to build your own block templates and then collect transactions from your own node and then do the hashing with a uh, with a bid axe or another ASIC or mining rig. Building your own block templates returns power to the plebs as Satoshi intended. In fact, the original Satoshi software was a node, a wallet, and a miner all in one. If you want to learn how to mine Bitcoin at home, I'll put a link to this video in the description notes below that teaches you how to use Bitcoin Knots, a Bitcoin Knots node, Datum, uh, Datum Gateway, and a bid axe to mine. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help to support the channel. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So now that we've established that the title of this video, instead of being Do Bitcoin Miners Control Bitcoin, really should have been Do Bitcoin Mining Pools Control Bitcoin. Now we can answer the question that was proposed in the comments section of this video. This video is called Anti-Fragile anti Bitcoin and Soft Forks. And Minimalized Man responded to the part of this video where I, I asserted that Bitcoin mining pools were basically service providers and that they work for the nodes and they did not have real power to, con to change consensus rules or influence consensus. And Minimalized Man writes, I honestly, I honestly believe this is a completely inaccurate weighting. Uh, waiting W E I G H T. Mining machines are literally the backbone of the entire network and are what provide the ability for users to use the network. They are not service providers unless you consider holding up the entire network as service. My response miners and mining pools don't get to decide on the rules of the game, in other words, consensus. They're just worker bees. All they do is build potential blocks and hash them and hope to find a block. 
but mining pools don't get to tell us a block should be eight megabytes, for example, instead of one megabyte, or that they should get paid 10 Bitcoin per block instead of 3.125 Bitcoin as the block subsidy. Those consensus rules are decided by node runners and hodlers, and then mining pools need to respect those rules or get their blocks discarded by nodes and not added to the chain, in which case miners will have burnt a lot of electricity but not have gotten paid. As mechanic likes to say, as Bitcoin mechanic likes to say, nodes are the soul of Bitcoin. Of course, many Bitcoiners like me run a node and then use it to mine blocks. That's Satoshi's ideal. So if miners, if mining pools controlled Bitcoin, an, a historical example would be we should have gotten SegWit 2x in 2017, since 80%, at least 80%, but a lot of people believe at various points the signaling was closer to 90 or 90% of miners or hash rate were in favor of it. SegWit received over 80% of the Bitcoin network's hash rate support its peak, with some reports indicating as much as 90 to 95%. Now, what was SegWit 2x? It was a failed hard fork proposal that was basically put forward by the largest and most powerful companies in the space. And this proposal proposed doubling the block size from one megabyte to two megabytes while adding SegWit. It failed because individual Bitcoin node runners went up against the biggest companies in the space at the time, which included Coinbase, I believe BitGo, then all the largest mining pools, and basically brought them to heel brought them back into line with the threat of a UASF, a user activated soft fork. As we can see here, this SegWit 2x uh, boycott, Bitcoin's UASF isn't backing down from, from August deadline. Again, uh, people like Luke Dasher were behind this UASF. I'll put a link to this article so you can read more about SegWit 2x. But basically the summary is that Bitcoin's history here teaches us that when the push comes to shove, Bitcoin mining pools can be and must be made to bend to the well of Bitcoin node runners. And this is what's going to happen again in 2026 if Bitcoin mining pools don't support us in our fight against spam. So we're giving them a chance to signal in favor of various soft fork proposals, do a minor activated soft fork, and they can signal that they support us. And that would be the nicest way to activate a soft fork that reduces non-monetary data on Bitcoin. But if they decide not to go along with this for some reason, they will need to be brought back into line. I'll put a link to this. This is one of the more popular soft fork proposals. There are alternate ones that are being proposed, but this reduced data temporary soft fork. And of course, the allusion to 2017 on here. Final thought experiment for doubters who still think that Bitcoin mining pools control Bitcoin. What would you say if 95% of mining pools, in other words, 95% of the hash rate, the computation, computational power, what would you say if 95% of mining pools decided to increase the max supply of Bitcoin from 21 million to 22 million and they started running software code to enforce that? Would that then become the real Bitcoin just because most of the hash rate decreed it? Of course not. Of course not. Bitcoin mining pools do not get to make protocol changes like this. Any changes like this are up to the node runners who are also incentivized to, to do the right thing to the extent that they also own Bitcoin and thus care about Bitcoin's future, whereas Bitcoin miners and mining pools tend to be much more short-term focused, especially if they're publicly traded. They have to focus on quarterly earnings and they're not really worried about the health of Bitcoin. And so they may be doing stuff like mining spam to try to juice their quarterly returns. But this is a problem, of course. It's like the tragedy of the commons where they're hurting Bitcoin in the process. And this is why node runners and hodlers who take the longer view need to sometimes bring the mining pools into line. Bitcoin mining pools need to bend their well to accommodate us node runners, or we will dump their blocks, not add them to each of our nodes versions of the blockchain. And in this way, we can starve the mining pools until they listen to us. Now, ultimately, if Ocean is successful in decentralizing Bitcoin mining, as I think they will be, none of this will be a problem because no individual block template building entity will control very much of the total hash rate. This is the problem with mining pool centralization. Remember, the ideal is as well for every node runner like you and me to also be mining with our Bitcoin nodes. If you run a Bitcoin Knots node, you can solo mine with Ocean's Datum, or you can point your hash, as we said, to Ocean's mining pool and share in the rewards. And I believe that Ocean's pooled mining actually allows you to run either Bitcoin Core or Bitcoin not. So it's agnostic about node software. Here's the thing though, even if you do pooled mining with Ocean, you will still be building your own block templates and deciding which transactions get included in a block. So there's zero way that Ocean can ever become a large mining pool like Foundry or Mara or Set, et cetera, that controls what gets into blocks and what gets excluded from blocks. In other words, can do transaction 
censorship, which clearly Foundry and Ant Pool and the large mining pools can do now. So this means that there's also no way that Ocean will ever be able to exert any influence around soft forks either. I should say when recommending Ocean here, I should disclose I'm not paid or compensated in any way to recommend them. I've never worked for them. I don't own any equity or options, but I'll put a link to their website so you can read more about them because they really are doing amazing things for Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Be sure as well to check out this home mining video because I think it's a really cool, fun project to do. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.